Et on observe aussi de plus en plus, on l'avait fait pour le cas, mais on n'avait pas fait suffisamment attention à cela, pour le cas du Rwanda, où on voit monter des échanges verbaux qui sont véritablement de nature à ostraciser l'autre. Hein. Se dire qu'on passe des mots aux morts très facilement à partir d'un certain moment. Donc l'intervention est, 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 est nécessaire et est souhaitable. Elle n'a pas lieu toujours. C'est le grand problème de la prévention des conflits. On voit venir les conflits, on ne réagit pas suffisamment. Le temps de la connaissance n'est pas le temps de l'action. Ce que les Nations Unies, ce que les organisations régionales sont en train de faire est formidable. Pourquoi D'abord parce qu'on se préoccupe de cette question de manière sérieuse. Il n'y a plus une organisation internationale, l'Union européenne, l'OSCE, l'Organisation des États américains, la Ligue arabe, l'Organisation internationale de la francophonie, qui a fait toute une, une, une déclaration qui s'appelle la déclaration de Bamako, qui cible les cas de conflictualité, qui ne soit saisie par des processus d'observation et ce qu'on appelle des mécanismes réactifs. Donc, on se préoccupe de cela. Mais quand le conflit intervient, tout le monde, tout le monde, et pas seulement les États, est impliqué dans euh, la cessation des hostilités. On ne peut plus faire de traitement du conflit s'il n'y a pas une implication régionale. Et nous avons la possibilité aujourd'hui, avec le chapitre 8 de la Charte des Nations Unies, qui a été réactivé, en quelque sorte, de régionaliser le traitement du conflit. Il n'y a pas de solution de conflit à l'interne. Toutes les solutions sont régionales. Il faut conforter les régions. Uh, 800 000 deaths, a terrible famine, which has caused more deaths. Uh, it was our first mediation, uh, an ex uh, our first experience, and it took 27 months of, of negotiation, a hard one, I have to admit, to come out with a peace agreement which was signed in 1992 after two years, more than two years. And after that experience, we were asked to intervene in other painful scenarios, especially in Africa, but not only. And we work, we cooperate with government ministers. And this, is, this has made of Sant'Egidio a trustable subject to deal with government. This is very important, I think. We can talk with everybody. We do not exclude anyone since mediation, and especially the The first part of mediation, the, uh, the non-official mediation, has to be inclusive as much as we can uh, if they are really willing to talk with us, if they really want to seek for peace. And there is also another advantage, which is the, the personal knowledge of our members about, uh, about the situation. We have a grassroots level in many of the countries where there is a crisis or a war. So we have fresh news every day. We live the life of the country, with our members, with our community. This is also very important to comprehend the roots of a crisis and the reasons. This cette situation uh, potentiellement explosive uh, au Soudan, entre le Sud et le Nord Soudan, et on va avoir deux éminents orateurs qui sont là, qui sont uh, des personnes uh, de terrain qui connaissent très bien la situation et qui pourront nous parler de cette question de la prévention de conflits, qui et comment agir pour éviter qu'il y ait une explosion au Soudan euh, en janvier prochain au moment du référendum. Donc Now there are many stereotypes that continue to hang on this issue of uh, Southern Sudan and the issue of the peace. I want to to highlight a few of them so that we don't fall into those pitfalls again. Firstly, the peace agreement was meant to be the last solution to the problem. And the two parties committed themselves to two things. One, they committed themselves to, to work for the unity of Sudan. And secondly, they committed themselves to making peace attractive to the people of Southern Sudan. Now, the debate now is whether the Southerners are satisfied with the, with the comprehensive peace agreement and therefore would go for a united Sudan on that basis, or they think that they need, this is not enough, they want to have a separate, a separate country. It would not have been possible to go through with that peace process if it were not the intervention of the international community. They got, didn't have resources, 
all the money that came to support the peace process came from the friends of IGAT, our IGAT uh, Partners Forum, the countries like United States, like uh, United Kingdom, Italy, uh, Norway, the five uh, countries that were more influential, and the other countries beyond that were the ones that supported the peace process. Uh, well, we have to remind ourselves as Africans that this, is, this was a, a solvable problem at the beginning because all the southerners or the southern political forces uh, demanded then was to have a federal form of government. Uh, it seems because the politicians at the national level were ignorant about what federalism meant then because they were so accustomed to the colonial system they, in, they inherited from the British. They, uh, they refused the idea outright, and they, they denied the southerners, the elite in particular, a federal status. And this was the beginning, because uh, uh, southerners started viewing themselves, seeing themselves as unequal to, to the other people in the north. And uh, they felt aggrieved, and then the, the problem started from that point, until it reached a point where uh, the demand was maximized to self-determination rather than having a federal arrangement. Uh, which is, in my view, a failure of the political elite. Uh, so unless uh, we reform the system, we cannot hope as Africans to have our problems resolved because our problems can be uh, you know, means whereby other, other powers intervene in our, uh, in our own affairs. In the case of the African Union, for instance, we've, we've seen in the case of Sudan a very supportive, a very cooperative attitude on the part of the African Union because these are the people who are in the region. They, they feel uh, the threat. They know what the separation of southern Sudan is going to mean. It's going to mean you are setting a precedent, a legal precedent. You are actually creating a contagion in the whole of Africa. You are creating a new, a new model to be followed. Unfortunately, the, the founding fathers of the African Union, uh, when they spoke of the borders, even though they recognized the illogical nature of those borders, but they said that those, wo those borders were inviolable. We must not tamper with the, with, the, with, the, with the borders. Now, if southern Sudan were to secede, that would create a new model to be followed by others. So reform of uh, uh, regional, continental uh, uh, institutions and reform of the, of the international in in institution is very crucial to conflict resolution in Africa in particular. Fine. Monsieur uh, Akol disait tout à l'heure, il faut que ce référendum uh, soit organisé de façon juste, transparente. Uh, Est-ce que vous pensez que uh, le délai donc, de, de janvier 2011 uh, à ce moment-là, on pourrait euh, garantir toutes ces conditions. Fortunately, the international community is putting pressure now on the on the procedure, and that's why they they keep saying referendum has to take place on the 9th of January. Well, it could take place in the 9th of January and lead to war, which is would not be uh, an, you know uh, an acceptable outcome. Uh, we we are ready, we are committed. Uh, if there is a, a free and fair and transparent uh, uh, referendum to accept the, the result as it is. The, 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 the democratic space has not opened up for all the political views to be expressed. You, you, you might have heard that there was a South-South dialogue in the middle of uh, last month uh, in order to discuss such issues. How do we prepare for the referendum and how do we prepare for the post-referendum uh, period? I think there is an intrinsic fear in the South that if the 9th of January is changed, then it may be the end of the whole thing, you see. But if, if, if the, all the parties, the, the parties in the North and the international community, which is so much concerned about what is happening in Southern Sudan, and uh, they are so uh, much committed to having a referendum carried out, I don't think it is difficult for them to tell the two parties that look, if you want a referendum that will avoid, uh, you know, controversy, that will avoid conflict, because that is the objective of the of the peace agreement to avoid conflict once and for all. If if this is what you want to work for, then let us agree on a firm alternative date that will ensure that all these processes are put in place uh, to to get us to the best outcome. Monsieur Maïda. Euh, par rapport à cette euh, question du rôle de la communauté internationale, euh, si on voit, euh, restons sur le cas euh, du Soudan, euh, ils disent que cette communauté internationale 
exerce un rôle qui peut être euh, sans doute négatif. Et il a même parlé d'influence qui, qui serait dictée par des intérêts privés. Je vous pose la question, vous ne parlez pas euh, au nom de tout le Conseil de sécurité, mais vous, êtes, <rire> vous travaillez au ministère des Affaires étrangères de la France, qui est un des pays euh, membres permanents du Conseil de sécurité. Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez dire par rapport à ça Est-ce que l'approche culturelle, parce qu'il dit aux Africains de comprendre euh, que c'est leur problème, c'est eux les premiers concernés par ça. Euh, donc la promotion des, des solutions locales, est-ce que ça pourrait être aussi euh, une approche possible dans le cas du Soudan euh, Moi, il y a deux points qui, qui, qui me frappent. Euh, D'abord, M. Akol, effectivement, a souligné que le processus avait été dégagé à partir d'un consensus euh, régional puisque les pays de l'IGAD avaient véritablement contribué à porter euh, une solution. Il y a un accord qui est l'accord inclusif de 2005, qui prévoit le processus. Cet accord a été avalisé par la communauté internationale et il fixait la date, effectivement, euh, du, du, du référendum. Donc, le processus a été mis en place, avalisé régionalement, construit régionalement, avalisé internationalement. Moi, je pense qu'il faut absolument euh, le conduire jusqu'au bout. Pourquoi Parce que l'un des grands problèmes de la résolution des conflits en Afrique était véritablement le report sans cesse différé de la question des euh, délais, euh, des termes. Euh, on on, on l'a vu pendant dix ans, pour prendre des comparaisons avec la Côte d'Ivoire. Hein, euh, et, et véritablement, la, le, 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 les élections du, du 28 sont en, en quelque sorte... Euh, une, une fixation et un, un heureux aboutissement, j'allais dire, de ce respect de la, de la procédure. Sans être un fétichiste de la procédure, hein, je crois que la procédure est une des dimensions de la légalité. Hein, sans véritablement en faire un fétichisme. Hein. Je suis effectivement d'accord avec M. Atabani pour dire que c'est le, le processus qui compte plus que la procédure. C'est l'issue qui compte plus que la procédure. Mais c'est vrai qu'à force de jouer sur les mandats, ce sont des délais, ce sont des, des élections régulières, régulières c'est-à-dire d'une part régulièrement programmées et d'autre part régulièrement tenues et faites dans un, dans un cas de transparence. Donc c'est un point qui me semble important. M. Atabani, c'est de, le, le deuxième point, euh, dit au fond on aurait dû voir avant de s'entendre sur, de, 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 de se fixer sur les, les délais, voir un peu des questions qui sont en suspens. La question des, des villes qui sont à la frontière, dont le statut n'est pas défini. Euh, la question du, de, la, de la distribution de la richesse. Donc, moi, je pense que la communauté internationale a joué, d'une part, euh, la clarification du processus de paix. Elle l'a accompagné, elle l'a suivi. Des délais ont été fixés. Je pense que il faudrait, les, il faudrait respecter ces délais. Anyway, having, having made a commitment, I think we should commit ourselves to that. What, what we are saying, what I'm saying, the government is saying is, let's have the referendum on the 9th of, of January, but let's do all the efforts to make the outcome uh, uh, conducive to a, a peace, a peace, you know, a peaceful situation, whether it's unity or separation. But to rush into Uh, you know, having the referendum without preparing the ground, without discussing the post-referendum issues, issues like border demarcation, for instance, you mentioned it, issues like nationality. You have, let's say, between one million to two million southerners in the south, in the north. No one knows for sure. What's going to be the status? Are they going to be the, the Bedouins, the new Bedouins, people without identity, like in you know between Iraq and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait? You didn't want them to end up in a kind of a stateless uh, situation. These are very crucial issues, not relating to the international players, but relating to the commoners, to the people on the ground. Mm -hmm.